Right, so in this example, sorry, I'm going to my screen now. Um, they're saying a sheet of cardboard, which is 240 millimeters by 150 millimeters, has squares of side X cut out of each corner. All right, so that is now what the first, the first picture represents the actual sheet of cardboard. The second picture represents what it looks like when the, the squares are cut out. All right, that's the edges, like the corner. Um, the edges are then folded up so as to form a box X millimeters high without the lid. So guys, if we just think of this as like a net, I know in grade eight you just those projects where you have to make a net and then you have to fold shape. So it makes sense to you guys that this shape, when we fold like these sides, these flaps up, right? They will form this, this box or this shape will form this box. Right? So that's what they're trying to show here. But guys, you do have to be able to visualize all of that if you just have the first picture. Okay, like I said in the textbook, where this example is from, they just gave the first picture and everything else you have to like be able to visualize. All right. Um, find X so that the volume of the box is a maximum and hence find the maximum volume. All right, so this is, instead of having separate questions broken up, they're just giving us one long question, we need to find the maximum volume, essentially. So guys, I want you to highlight a few things here. Um, find X so that the volume of the box is a maximum, and then we are going to find the maximum volume. That's what we need to do. So that it looks like we're going to have two steps, but actually we're going to have three steps. All right. Our very first step is we need to find an expression for the volume of this box. Then we're going to find x so that the volume is a maximum, and then we're going to find the maximum volume. Okay, so let's write that down so we know what we're doing. So step one is going to be to write an expression. And if you think back to the example that we've done before, that we did yesterday, and that you did tomorrow, when they're breaking it up, that's normally the first question. So that the volume is written like this, or find an expression for the volume of this box. So okay, guys, this again is a rectangular prism. So the volume is again going to be length times breadth and height. All right, so volume is length times breadth times height. Now guys, it's not going to be 240 times 150, right? We're not doing the volume of this flat sheet of cardboard. We're doing the volume of this block, the box. Of this box. So the original length of the sheet was 240, but then they cut away two corners, right? If we're just looking at the length here, does it make sense to you guys that they cut away X over here and another X over there? So what is this length actually going to be? 240 minus 2X. All right, that is important, guys. So that is the length. It's going to be 240 minus 2x. Next up, we need to figure out what the breadth of the box is, not the sheet of cardboard. The sheet had a breadth of 150, but again, they cut away two squares. So minus x minus x. So that's going to be 150 minus 2x. And then the height, what is the height of this box? Remember, we're folding it up. The height is just x. Okay, so remember, we, we're going to have to find the derivative of this expression. All right, so we can't leave it like this. Unfortunately, we do have to multiply that out. Now, I suggest just multiplying the x maybe into this bracket. All right, so that we have two binomials, then we can foil them out. So I'm just going to leave my first bracket as it is for now. 240 minus 2x. And if we multiply the x into this bracket, we're going to have 
150x minus 2x squared. But guys, if you want to, you can pull these two brackets out and then multiply x into the final bracket if you want to see it like that. Right, it doesn't matter. Okay, now what is 240 times 150? Yeah, okay. 36,000. So if I multiply these two together, I'm pulling them out now, hey? That's going to be 36,000x. Then I'm going to do 240 times negative 2x squared. So that's negative 480x squared. Then I'm going to do my inners. Negative 2x times positive 150x is negative 300x squared, right? And then if I do my last term, I'm going to get negative 2x times negative 2x squared. That's positive 4 it's cute. I'm just going to simplify that. So I have, and again, it doesn't matter what order you write your values in, I'm just going to put the x cubed in front. I just prefer it that way, but it really doesn't matter. So 4x cubed. Then I'm going to do my x squared term in the middle. So that's negative 780, right? Maybe I saw it here. Okay, negative 780 x squared. And then positive 56,000 x. Okay, step one. So guys, even if they don't say you have to write an expression, you do have to. Because this is now the expression that you are going to find as a relative type. All right, so in your question, you need to look for what are they asking you to find the maximum of. I'm just going to go back up to the question. They're saying we need to find the maximum volume. So we need an expression for the volume. All right. If they ask for the maximum surface area, we're going to have to find an expression for the surface area. All right. So whatever they ask you to maximize or minimize, that is the expression that you are able to find in the first step. Okay. Are there any questions on that first step, guys? All right. Okay, step two. Now, in order to find the value of x that will give me the maximum volume, I need to take the derivative of the volume expression and make that equal to zero. Okay, so that's going to be our second step. Volume, we're going to say dash, derivative of volume. That we must make equal to zero. Remember, guys, that is what you always do when you're finding the maximum or the minimum. It comes back to when we have a graph, the maximum value of the graph is at the turning point. The minimum value also at the turning point. And to get the turning point, we would make the derivative equal to zero. Okay, so that is why we're doing this. Again, it's not a very difficult derivative in this case. The derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. Then we have minus. Now, 780 times 2 is that 1560. Yeah. 1560x. And then the derivative of 56,000x is just 56,000. That is equal to 0. Pretty sure all of these are divisible by 12. I'm going to just double check. Yes. And then we can divide by 12, but we are probably going to have to use the quadratic formula in this case anyway, because um, it's quite a hectic quite a hectic final. Okay, so that one divided by 12 is 150. So 150x and then plus. Anyway, 3,000. And guys, can we think of times of 3,000 that when we add them? <laughs> can we get negative 150? 150 and 20. Okay, so you can figure it out like that. Sometimes you can just like play around on the calculator, or you can just use the quadratic formula. All right, but I'm just going to use those two values. What did you say? 120. What? 150. 150. It's, oh, but it's supposed to be positive. 
So it can't be negative one fifty and positive ten. But then it's going to be negative one seven sixteen. Let me just check with me. Yeah, you can use a good idea for me. I'm just lazy now to actually put everything in. So let me just do this one with me. So I am getting 130. There we go. So x minus 100 and x minus 30, like that. Or put out the formula for an x. And then we will just show the substitution line with me. So from this, we're getting that x is equal to 100 or x is equal to 30. So guys, we're getting two x values. So this is not what I was talking about earlier. Now I need to figure out which one is actually either valid or going to give us the maximum value. So if we just keep going back up to our dimensions, normally that's the easiest way of checking. This dimension here, this was 240 minus 2x, right? Is that going to work if I have 100 as my x value? Is that going to give me an actual dimension here? 240 minus 2 times 100, that's going to give me 40, right? Okay, which can work. But what about what, this one? 150 minus 2x. Remember, this dimension was 150 minus 2x. So if x is 100, this is going to be 150 minus 200, which is negative 50. And can I have a negative dimension there? Yeah. All right. So in this case, x equals 100 actually doesn't work. So I'm just going to write here invalid, I mean in brackets, just as an extra thing here, makes great negative. So guys, it's not necessarily the biggest x value is going to give you the maximum volume. All right, that's also important. You do actually have to go check. And if you can't, if you see from the dimensions that both of them, both of these x values would give you valid dimensions, you would literally have to calculate the volume using both of them and then choose the maximum. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would get marks for all the calculations, but then there would be another mark for them saying say for maximum value equals this. Okay, so you wouldn't be allowed to just leave it as two answers. You would have to say which one is the maximum. All right, guys, that was step two. Are there any questions on step two? Step three is what? What was the actual question here? Find the maximum volume. Good. Okay, so step three. Now we're going to have to sub in the x value that we got into our volume expression to get the maximum volume. Okay, I'm going to write here, find max v by subbing in x value. Uh, they can also ask it in a different way. They can maybe ask for which dimension of the maximum volume. Then you'll have to calculate the dimensions, right? I think that's what we did yesterday. So it depends on the question. In this question, they ask for the maximum volume. But we do need to actually get the maximum volume. So that expression that we got was up there, right? 4x cubed. I'm just going to rewrite it because it is all three now. 4x cubed minus 780x squared plus 36,000x. <clears throat> so now we have to sub in x equals 30, because that is the x value that will give us the maximum value. Yeah. No, and this was all saying one fish. 
Yeah, sorry, but you don't want to have the same. Okay, guys, let me just work this out quickly. I'm guessing it's going to be quite a big number, although we are minusing that squared one. So this is 486,000. And what was this millimeters? Hey, millimeters cubed. That is the maximum volume <clears throat> of this box. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you would just use your 240 minus 2x and your 150 minus 2x and x, and you would just list the three of them. Yeah. All right, guys, those are the three things that you will always have to follow if it's left as like an open ended question, like it was in this case. Is it just give you an, an example or scenario and then you say, find the maximum body, find the maximum body. And we even did this in question 13. I'm just quickly going to go back to it. I'll bring this up again just now. But if we look at what we did in question 13, we found an expression for PQ. Then we made the derivative of PQ equal to zero, we solved for x. Then we sub that x value into our expression for PQ to get the maximum. All right, so we had the same three steps in this question. In the previous one, we also had the same three steps, but they broke it up into sub questions for us. So this was number five from the other. A was finding an expression for the volume. B was now finding the x value that will give you the maximum volume, also the dimension, right? But up until then, it's exactly the same as what we did just now. And then C was actually finding the maximum volume by subbing it in. Okay, so you are essentially going to follow those same three steps in these questions always, right? Unless they throw some kind of silent for it. I'm going to give you a few more to practice. We are also doing a new section tomorrow, guys. So please do be a student. We do have maths after first break. <clears throat> We don't have maths on Friday, so. <laughs> All right, guys, same exercise. So I'm just going to write here. Okay, guys, those three places. Um, I'm just going to write down a few formulas for you because you might not remember. In number three, they're talking about a rectangle, so that should be fine. We all remember the area of a rectangle is being time for it, right? Um, number six has to do with a cylinder. And you're talking about the volume. Okay, so I'm just going to write here for number six. The volume is pi r squared times height. But remember that pi is just a number, right? Pi is not a variable. So you're not going to, yeah, you only can have a pi in it, that's fine. But pi is essentially just a number. Okay, so you're going to treat it as a number. Um, and then what is seven? So in question seven, they're giving you a rectangle and then two semicircles cut up on either side. All right, do we remember how to find the area of a, semi of a circle? It is pi squared. Okay. Area of circle is pi r squared. You do have to know these formulas for your exam, right? So it's a good idea to have a list somewhere. 
statements probably saw that in a speech this much. No, then I'll get you guys a list. All right, do those three questions, please. Do them now. We still have about two minutes. Can get through them now? Okay. 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 Okay.